Okay, so sometimes we run across things that are multiplying or possibly raising things that are exponents to other exponents or things that are dividing with exponents. We run into these times when we have to multiply and deal with exponents. A real life quick example of that would be if you were looking at uh, your house, and I'm just going to give a room of your house that is 11 feet by 12 feet, and you wanted to find the area, you would do 11 feet times 12 feet, and you would multiply 11 times 12, and you would get your answer of 133 feet squared. Now where did the feet squared come from? Well a lot of us know that when we talk about our house we talk about the square footage of our house. It's not a big deal but it's because of what we're going to be talking about today when we're multiplying things with exponents. For instance like 7 cubed times 7 squared you're actually using the same technique that we did with doing feet times feet is feet squared. So what we typically do if we don't know what's going on is we try to break these things down. So for instance 7 cubed and 7 squared is 7 times 7 times 7 and 7 times 7. That's what the definition of an exponent really is. It tells us to multiply something times itself that many times. So 7 cubed would be 7 times 7 times 7. 7 squared would be 7 times 7. The same concept applies over here for 5 squared. When you cube that, it means take 5 squared 3 times. Or 5 squared times 5 squared times 5 squared. So what we're doing is we're breaking it down into the smaller components here. But what you notice is when we break it down or expand it into these components like we see, it makes things a little bit uglier. There's more stuff across the paper. And so there is actually a way to simplify that. So let me see if I can get this thing to slide down here. Oh, there we go. Notice there are five of these now. And so 7 cubed times 7 squared actually simplifies down to 7 to the fifth power. Notice what happened is it's really taking three of them and two of them and adding them up because there will be five sevens multiplied together now. The same thing over here, five squared is five times five, five squared is five times five, five squared is five times five, but notice how many there are. There are six of them, so that is five to the sixth power. Or in other words, this simplifies down to here. So what we're talking about today is these things called properties of exponents, where we are simplifying things that are multiplying or dividing with exponents or raising exponents to another exponent. And what it does is it gives me the ability, like that feet times feet is feet squared. There's one here and there's one here, so it's two total. It's the same kind of possibility when I'm dealing with things that are much higher and much uglier exponents. To show you one more example down here, notice this one, x to the fourth would be x times x times x times x. x to the fifth would be x times x times x times x times x. But that is nine total x's, so x to the fourth times x to the fifth is x to the ninth. Four plus five is nine. So that is a property of exponent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through and I'm going to show you all those properties of exponents. I created another video for you too that shows you how you can use a couple colored sheets of paper and lay them on top of each other like this right here. So you have four sheets of paper with tabs down at the bottom and then you can fold this top down. You'll have two colors that are the same down in the middle. You'll actually have two pink tabs in the middle or if you use different colors that's fine then you would have this little booklet. I created a video to show you what that booklet would look like. You can use it if you would like. If you don't want to, you can just take notes on your own paper. 
So what we're going to be looking at, like I said, is properties of exponents. You actually probably have used these before in some of your previous algebra classes, foundations in algebra, or probably also in your um, classes in middle school when you were first learning about exponents. That's the first time that I actually learned these properties myself. So I know that if I learned them in middle school, you guys have probably learned them then. Now, whether you remember them or not is a different story, and we're going to go through and we're going to practice them on this video. And then we'll probably practice them a little bit more tomorrow as well as some a little bit uglier exponents that come from radicals or square roots as well. So notice a couple of key terms, though, that you do need to understand. And if you want to make this little booklet, if you follow the video instructions on making a little booklet, you can use properties of exponents or put properties of exponents on the title of your booklet. You can put this as the title of your notes for today. And then this right here is the base number. This right here would be the exponent. So when we talk about 7 squared a minute ago, 7 is the base, 2 is the exponent. You're going to hear me say those words, so I just want to make sure that you understand those words and know the difference between what's a base and what's an exponent. There's going to be some of these properties that reference the bases, but then tell you what to do with the exponents. So make sure you understand the difference between those two things. So before um, we get into the properties, I'll remind you again, there is a video on making this little booklet. If you would like to make a little booklet that has these little tabs, what you'll hear me reference in the uh, video about tabs, you don't have to worry about it if you're not making your own little booklet. So usually what I do is I put this little title on the outside, the cover page of my tablet. And then on the first tab, the second color that I use on my little booklet, I would go through and I'd write out the properties and I'd write it across the tab right here. And then I would open my booklet and right on the inside is where I would put my notes. So I, usually I like to do this lesson in class, but guys, we are in a weird year, obviously, and so that's this is where we're at. So the first property that you are going to see is called the product of powers property. I would pause the video and write down this title. The titles are not the most important part. The property is. So you're going to see that some of these properties have the same or similar sounding titles to them. That being said, I have seen the names of these properties pop up from time to time on standardized tests. Whether we like them or not, they are there. So just realize that they sometimes use the names. So the product of powers property, it means exactly what it says. Product means multiplication. Powers is something with a base and an exponent. So basically what this means is the multiplication of two things with bases and exponents. More specifically, what it means is when you multiply like bases. Notice that the bases right here, the a's are the same, but the exponents are not. The exponents don't have to be the same. So when I multiply like bases, the property tells me to add the exponents. You probably want to pause the video here and copy down this into your notes. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So after you've paused the video and copied it into your notes, I'm going to go through some examples of these. Again, this would be on your first tab if you're going through and you're making a little booklet. So now we're going to do some examples of these. The first example is very similar to that one that we talked about a little while ago. Feet times feet was feet squared because it was 1 plus 1. You have here x times x. That's x to the first power and x to the first power. There's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. And what this is doing is this is simplifying things. So for instance, when I come across one like this one, 2 squared times 2 to the third, it would be 2 to the fifth. Now that doesn't sound like an important thing to do, but when you can simplify something like this, 
it makes it a lot easier to type into your calculator. So I'm going to go to my calculator here and open that up and show you what I mean. If I have 2 squared times 2 to the third in my calculator, I can type that in as 2 squared times 2 raised, using that little carrot key, to the third. Press enter and I get 32. Yeah, I'm sorry about that little weird parentheses going on there. I forgot to take it out of the exponent. Now that's not bad. I'm not saying that's terrible to type in. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't type that in. What I'm saying is that if you know how to simplify it to 2 to the fifth, 2 raised to the fifth is a lot quicker to type in. So notice it gives me the same answer though because those are equal. That's what these properties tell me. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So take a look at this example over here. Maybe try it before Mr. Harrison goes through it. y to the fourth times y to the sixth times y to the seventh. If you tried it, hopefully you got y to the seventeenth. I don't know why I put an equal sign there. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 7 is 17. So y to the 17th power. And guys, this is probably the easiest property that we do, but when we start combining it with some of the others, you still need to keep them separate in your head. I can't do that for you. I can teach the properties to you, but you have to practice them enough to keep them separate. So when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. And this is something that we will also encounter in the next chapter that we look at probably when we're dealing with exponents. So y to the fourth times y to the sixth times y to the seventh, four plus six plus seven is 17. These two things are equivalent. Please make sure you understand that that is not the same thing as adding y squared plus y squared. That would be 2y squared. Notice the difference is adding between those, not multiplying like bases. So be careful because you have got to remember we've already done this. We've already done things like 2x plus 2x is 4x, not 2x squared. So don't confuse these new things that we're talking about with multiplying with exponents with things that we've already done with collecting like terms. You've got to understand these properties are talking about when you multiply like bases right here. So that's the first property. The second property is called the power of a power property. Again, this would be on the colored tab if you were making this little booklet that I told you you could make. It would be on the colored tab that is the same color as your cover page. If you used all white sheets of paper, it's easy. You'd just be on the next tab down, and then you can open it up and put your notes. So your notes would look like this. The power of a power property is when you have an exponent with a base, and then you raise it to another exponent, a power of something that's already a power. So what it looks like is this, a power raised to a power. And we actually looked at that one back over here with 5 squared raised to the third. We said it means 5 squared times 5 squared times 5 squared, or 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is 5 to the sixth. Notice 2 times 3 is 6. That's what this property says. It says when you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. So we raise a power to a power, you multiply. Or raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. Notice you don't multiply the base. You only multiply the exponent. So after you've copied this down, we're going to do these examples. So when you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. So 3 to the third raised to the fifth power 
That means really three to the third times itself five times. That would be tough to do in your head, tough to type into the calculator. So, but you can simplify it, make it easier to type in the calculator. Three times five is 15. So it's the same thing as three to the 15. Now that's still not a pretty answer in the calculator. It should be a really large number because that's three times itself 15 times, which would be one million, uh, excuse me, 14 million, 348,907. So it's still not a pretty, pretty answer there, but it is easier to type this in than it is to type this in. Let me show you what I mean by that. Three to the third raised to the fifth, you would have to do three raised to the third. Make sure, well, see, it's even harder when you can't type. Three to the third, then you would have to hit the arrow to get out of the exponent, close your parentheses up, go back to your exponent again, three to the third raised to the fifth. It's not that it gives you the wrong answer, it's just easier to type in and simplify. And it's even better when we're dealing with variables because we can't type variables into the calculator. So x to the fifth raised to the second power, five times two would be x to the tenth. So that is an exponent raised to another exponent. You multiply the exponents. So now what we're gonna do is the next property. This one, if you are making your little booklet, this one would be the first tab in the middle where I told you you'd have double color tabs in the middle. This would be the first one if you're using colors. If you're using all white paper, it wouldn't even matter. If you're using your notebook paper to take notes, ignore what I just said. So the power of a product property. Now this sounds very similar to the first one. The first property is the product of powers. It's when you multiply two things with exponents. The power of a product is when you raise something that's already multiplied to a power. So you have two different things inside the parentheses and then you raise it to a power outside the parentheses. But notice the things on the inside of the parentheses are multiplied. It is a product. It is not a addition problem on the inside. So let me show you what I mean by that. It is not a plus b raised to the power. This right here is not what this property is talking about. So when you have two things like this, notice what happens is basically I just raise the a to the power and I raise the b to the power, or essentially I raise both things to the power. So this one has a very simple explanation, raise everything to the exponent, but again, it has to be multiplication on the inside for this to work. We will see that this also works for division here in a little bit, but make sure you realize it's not for addition or subtraction on the inside. For those, you have to think more about your order of operations or another method of multiplying that we're going to have to look at later. So we raise everything to the exponent. So what that looks like, like this first one, you have 2 times 3 squared. You would do 2 squared and 3 squared you would square both of them. Now two squared is four, three squared is nine, so four times nine is 36. It's a way to simplify again. It doesn't mean that you can't just type things in the calculator. I'm not saying you can't. This is not, these properties are not as useful for numbers as they are for variables. And we'll talk about why in just a second. So 2 times 3, another option for this one is to not even use the first property that we're looking at here, power of a product. You could actually use just the product of exponents. 2 times 3 is 6, so you could say 6 squared, and it's still 36. Either way, you can use the property there or not. Now, with the one with at the bottom here, with the variable, you have to be able to use the property. One example of where this shows up would be something like the Pythagorean theorem. And a construction worker maybe is working on the roof of a house, and they know, 
I know I'm just really bad at drawing. I'm sorry, guys. I'll try this again. Wow. <laughs> and then I bumped the table. Well, let's try this again. That's a little better. And they know, for instance, that this height right here is going to be 10 feet. They know they're going to have 10 feet of clearance. This right here they know is from the middle of the clearance to the edge of the house is 24 feet. But they don't know what this length over here is going to be. They don't know what it's going to be. Um, but they know that they're going to have to divide it up into two sections. So it's going to be two X's instead of just one X. The Pythagorean theorem says if you have this right triangle like this in a house, 10 squared plus 24 squared, the legs of this triangle is what they're called, equals 2x squared, the hypotenuse squared. And so this gives me the ability to find x, and then I would know where my boards should be cut. If I know it's going to have to be two pieces, because I know it's not going to be uh, able to be used, uh, excuse me, able to find one piece big enough to fit this side of the triangle. I know it's a that's a big kind of convoluted example, real quick example, but I just want to show you. Notice right here, you end up with this Pythagorean theorem, you end up with this guy right here, 2x in parentheses squared. That's exactly what this property deals with. This property tells me if I want to find out what that is, I have to square both of them. So I have to square the 2, 2 squared, and the x. So 2 squared is 4. x squared is literally x squared. So now I have this 4x squared, which I can put right here on this side of this equation. I can do the math over here with 10 squared and 24 squared, and I can find out what this would be for x. Now, it would require some solving, and that's going to be a little solving technique that we look at later when we look at square roots in particular with quadratics. Ugh, scary word, right? We'll talk about that later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an example that uses all three properties that we've just done. So if you want to, if you're making the little booklet, you can put this on the back of your booklet. If you want to put it in the same page of your little booklet that you're on right now, that's fine. If you're just making your notes on notebook paper, just put it on your notebook paper. This particular example uses all three properties that we've looked at so far. So notice first here I have this parentheses. Again, thinking about the order of operations here will help. And I have 3x squared. I don't know what x is, so I can't do anything with that. But then it is cubed on the outside. That is the property that we just talked about. So that means I need to raise both of these to the third power. So I need to do 3 cubed and x squared cubed. Well, crap, that's already got an exponent. That means it goes back to the other property that we did a little while ago. We'll deal with that in a second. So, 3 cubed, I just take out my calculator. I can do 3 cubed in the calculator, and 3 cubed is 27. Type in that, get 27. But this goes back to that other property we did a little bit ago. You have an exponent raised to another exponent. So I'm going to go back and review that with you. If you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. So if I multiply 2 times 3, I get x to the 6th power. But then I still have this little x to the 5th over here hanging out after I get all the parentheses done. It's multiplying, but notice what it's multiplying. It's multiplying like bases. That's the first property we did. When you multiply like bases, oops, sorry, multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So when you multiply like bases, you add 6 and 5, you get 11. And so I simplified this down to this. Now, I'm not saying it's still pretty. That's not what we mean by the word simplify. And that's something to always remember in mathematics when you see the word simplify. It doesn't mean things are going to be simpler looking. All right, next property. The next property is not used a lot in Algebra 1, 
Uh, you see it a little bit more in Algebra 2. And um, possibly also if you get into some pre-cal maybe, or calculus when you get into college. But the negative exponent property. The negative exponent property basically means if you have a negative exponent, you don't want to leave it as a negative in your answer. You want to get it to be a positive. Now, we will work with some negative exponents in the calculator later on when we get into um, exponential functions. But with negative exponents with variables, you want to make sure that you move it to the opposite part of the fraction and make the exponent positive. So if it's on the top of the fraction, we move it to the bottom of the fraction and make the exponent positive. If, for some reason, hold on, there's an announcement coming. Sorry guys, they were making an announcement over the intercom there. Uh, as I was saying, if the negative exponent is on the bottom of the fraction, you would move it to the top of the fraction and make it positive. Now notice what I'm doing here. I'm not doing a reciprocal, so be careful. I'm not taking it and flipping it. That's not what we mean. If you had negative exponents on the top and negative exponents on the bottom, yes, you would flip both of them. But you have to make sure that you only move the base that has the negative exponent and make the exponent positive. Don't move everything, okay? So when we look at 2 to the negative second, what that means is we're going to move that 2 down to the bottom of the fraction and make the exponent positive 2. You put a 1 on the top if there's nothing there. If there's something there, you just leave whatever was already there. Don't change things. It's not flipping anything, remember. It's just moving the negative exponent to the bottom or moving it to the top. So this would be 1 over 4. Now let me show you in the calculator. If you did 2 raised to the negative second, you would get 0.25, which is math, enter, enter, 1 fourth. So that's why that's happening that way. And I know that's kind of weird, but raising something that is a base to a negative power tends to make those decimals and those smaller numbers. And we'll see that when we look at exponential functions as well. Notice on this second one, though, x squared, the x does not have a negative exponent. So you don't move it if it doesn't have a negative exponent. The only one I move is the y to the negative third. I'm going to move it to the top of this fraction up here with the x and make it positive 3. So, guys, the negative exponent property is not a difficult property, but a lot of people miss it because they try to start flipping the whole fraction around. It's only the things that have negative exponents that move. If you do have multiple negative exponents, like this one, you have x to the negative second and y to the negative fourth, you are going to move both of them. So you are going to take the x down to the bottom, and you are going to take the y up to the top. But you do not move the 2 and the 3. You only move the things that have negative exponents. Like I said, this is not a real common property that you would see but I just want to make sure that you have that in your toolbox just in case you run into some negative exponents and just in case the end of course test does ask you about some of these properties. The next property, and by the way, if you are making your little booklet, this property would be the one that is right underneath the double tab in the middle of the colors if you're using the same color in the middle. If you're using white tabs, it doesn't matter. If you're using your notebook, again, ignore what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> I feel like I have to repeat myself a lot, huh? All right, so this one is called the zero exponent property. This one actually, technically, I know I said the uh, product of powers property, the first one we did, is probably the easiest one. But this one is probably the easiest. It's just not used as much. This one is called the zero exponent property. And it's exactly what it sounds like if you have something raised to a zero power. Notice, anything raised to the zero power is 1. And 
I don't know of another easier way to say that. <laughs> Sorry. But if you have 3 to the 0 power, it's 1. If you have 10 to the 0 power, it's 1. If you have 102 raised to the 0 power, it's 1. Now, I know that's kind of weird to think about because you're thinking you've got a big base number like 102. But the zero power means something that actually ties with the next property we're going to look at. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But it's not raising something. It's not multiplying something by itself. So that's why it's one. So you get anything to the zero power is one. Now I'm going to give you the actual reason it's one here in just a little bit. The more mathematical definition. One thing I would like you to be careful of with this power is if you have something like x squared times y to the zero power in parentheses, yes, that's still one. But if you had something like x squared times y over 10 raised to the zero power times four, that's not one, that's four. Yes, I know Mr. Harrison's being a little tricky there. This right here is one but it's still 1 times 4. So be careful. It's Just because you see a zero exponent doesn't mean everything is 1. It just means the thing that you're raising to the zero power is 1. Like I said, that property actually comes directly from this one. This is the next property. This one should be on your next to last tab. We're almost done. We're on the sixth property. We got one more after that. This one is called the quotient of powers property. Quotient means division. This is when you divide two powers or two things with exponents. Again, not addition or subtraction, but dividing. Notice, like the first property, the bases are the same. So we are dividing like bases. Well, think back over here. When we multiplied like bases, what did we do? We added the exponents together when we multiplied like bases. So guess what? When you divide like bases, guess what you do? Wow. Sorry, guys. When you divide like bases, you subtract. Good grief, this thing's being aggravating. You subtract the exponents. So you may want to write that down again in your notes. Again, you can pause the video. I shouldn't have to say that a lot, but you can pause the video if you need to. Then we're going to look at these examples at the bottom. x to the 6th divided by x to the 2nd. When you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. Don't do anything to the base, though. So x to the 6th divided by x to the 2nd, you get x to the fourth. Six minus two is four. Now watch what happens on this one over here. This is the reason the zero property works. Three minus one would be x squared because you do three minus one. Two minus two would be y to the zero, but that would be just one times x squared, which is x squared. But notice why that works. Guys, the reason that anything to the zero power is 1 is because that's literally what it is. y squared divided by y squared is 1. So when you do y to the zero power, 2 minus 2 is y to the zero power. It's 1. That's what happens when you actually divide two things that have the same exponent like that. It cancels out. Now, I do want to point out, I didn't point this out necessarily on the uh, properties when we multiplied like bases, but if you divide things that are not like bases, don't do this property. Make sure, guys, the big key with these properties is you only use the properties that are allowed. You don't make up your own properties. I don't care how smart you think you are at math. Mr. Harrison doesn't make up his own properties. I use these properties when I'm dealing with exponents. And I only use these properties. I don't make up my own. Take a look at this one. 
this is an example of where negative exponents actually show up. Notice you have x to the third on the top, x to the seventh on the bottom. That would be 3 minus 7. That's negative 4. But what did we say about the negative exponent? We move that to the bottom of the fraction and make it positive. But let me show you a shortcut. Notice that it's still subtraction, but if the bigger number's on the bottom and the smaller number's on the top, you can subtract and leave it on the bottom. 7 minus 3 is 4, and I can just leave that on the bottom of the fraction. Please only do that if the bigger number's on the bottom. Don't leave it on the bottom if the bigger number's on the top, like x to the sixth divided by x to the second. All right, let's do an example, another example here that requires multiple properties here. So notice on the top, I have this percentage that is, percentage, this parentheses that is squared on the top. When I have that parentheses like that, remember that is the power of a product property that says I need to raise everything on the inside to the power. Remember that only works if the things on the inside are multiplying or we're about to see in a minute dividing. But when we have things inside here that are adding and subtracting, we're going to do something totally different. That's not one of the properties. So we're going to take this and we're going to square everything inside here. So we're going to square the 5. 5 squared. We're going to square the x squared. Notice that's another property. That's an exponent raised to another exponent. 2 times 2 is x to the fourth. When you raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply them. Then I square the y. So y squared. On the bottom, I'm not doing anything yet. I haven't done anything to those yet. On the top, I do have 25, so that's 25, x to the fourth, y to the squared, or y squared. And then I have 5x to the fifth, y to the first. What is 25 divided by 5? Guys, please don't do anything weird there and start doing some kind of property. That's not a property. That's division. <laughs> Granted, yes, there are division properties. But that is just dividing 25 divided by 5. So don't do weird stuff just because we're learning these properties with exponents. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now I have x to the 4th on the top and x to the 5th on the bottom. That's dividing like bases, so I subtract the exponents. But remember I told you a little shortcut. If the bigger one's on the bottom, you can do 5 minus 4 and leave x to the first on the bottom. Now, you don't actually have to write the little first power if you don't want to. The y squared and the y to the first, the bigger one's on the top, so we're going to leave it on the top. It's 2 minus 1 is y to the first, or y. Like I said, you don't have to leave the little 1 and the exponent there. You can just put 5y over x. So that used several of our properties there. Guys, that's the trickiest part about some of these is when you start combining all these properties into one problem. I am not going to intentionally try to make 10,000 problems on the next test like this that are difficult, but I am going to try to get you to actually go through and use these properties. The last property. I know. Praise Jesus, right? The last property is the power of a quotient property. This is exactly like the power of a product. When you have two things inside of parentheses that are multiplying, you can raise them to the power on the outside if there's a power. The same thing works for quotient, for division. So if you have two things inside of parentheses that are dividing and you raise it to a power, you can raise both of them to the power. This does not work with addition or subtraction on the inside. I will repeat it again and write it down again. This is not the same thing if you have a plus b raised to a power or if you had a minus b raised to a power. You can't just raise those to a power. It's not the same thing. 
So it has to be multiplication or division on the inside of the parentheses. If it is, you can raise everything to the exponent. So I'm going to give you a chance to write that down. And well, like I said, you can pause the video here. And then we're going to look at the examples at the bottom. And then we're going to finish out with an example, hopefully, here in a second, that requires us to use maybe every property or close to every property. So we're going to raise everything to the exponent if it's multiplication or if it's division on the inside. So notice on this first one, I have x squared on the top and y cubed on the bottom. That's division. And I'm squaring the whole thing. But notice also that I'm throwing in another property at you here. This already has an exponent, so an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. So that would be x to the, oops, sorry, I left the white pen on, x to the fourth power. Then I have y to the third raised to the second. 3 times 2 would be y to the sixth. Notice those are not like bases, so don't try to do anything else. Don't try to divide those because they're not like bases. Trickiest part, like I said, is not trying to overdo it. Don't try to make up some kind of property that doesn't exist. Simplify it, but don't go too far. All right, see if you can try the other one. Cube everything in those parentheses. All right, so if we raise everything to the third power, we do 2 to the third power x to the third power. On the bottom, 3 to the third power. y to the third power. z to the third power. Everything gets raised to the third power. And I know that's a lot, but guys, that's what this property says. If I have this division or multiplication on the inside, I can raise everything to the power. And guys, what we're doing really is we're keeping us from having to write this thing out right here three times and then multiply it. That's what's going to happen anyways. So the only thing to do left over now is to do 2 to the third power in the calculator. That would be 8. x to the third, you just write it down. 3 to the third power, we did that earlier. That would be 27. And we have y to the third and z to the third. Notice that you cannot actually divide anything because 8 is not divisible by 27 and it doesn't reduce any. You could check it on the calculator. X, Y, and Z are not the same base, so I can't use this property of dividing like bases that we talked about over here. So that is what you do when you have fractions on the inside division. All right. So we're going to do one final example here. Oh, wow, that's pretty, isn't it? One final little example here. This one requires us to do a lot of properties. Now, don't panic. I'm not going to give you 19,000 of these on the test. Maybe only one, maybe two at the most. So, notice, first of all, first thing that jumps out at me is this parentheses over here. This parentheses is being squared. So that means I need to do 2 squared and I need to square the x cubed, but it already has an exponent. So an exponent raised to another exponent, 3 times 2 would be x to the 6th. Then I have 3x on the bottom down here. Over here, if you want to, you can go ahead and simplify some of these fractions over here because you've got dividing like bases. My personal opinion, this is just a personal opinion. You know what they say about opinions, right? My personal opinion is to just go ahead and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom before I do any division properties. The reason is because when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, it's going to get everything into one big fraction, and then I deal with division. I like to save my division properties for the end of the problem. Now, that's just my personal opinion, but yes, I've done these. I've done thousands of these, and it does help things if you get it to be one big fraction first. So 2 squared is 4. So 4 times all of this, you have x to the 6th, y to the 4th, z to the 2nd. When you're multiplying, there are no like bases that I'm multiplying. So it's 2 to the, uh, excuse me, 2 to the 2nd is 4, x to the 6th, y to the 4th, z to the 2nd. You just multiply. 
Then you have the bottom is going to require a little bit of work here. 3 is going to be in front. Then you have x times x squared. That would be x to the third because 1 plus 2 is 3. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Then you have y to the fifth and z to the ninth. So I like to get it as this one big fraction here and then simplify my fraction. 4 over 3, I'll show you real quick. 4 divided by 3 does not divide evenly. It's a decimal. Mass, enter, enter, leaves it as 4 thirds. It does not reduce any. 4 thirds is the answer there. But now I have exponents on like bases. x to the 6th divided by x to the 3rd. When you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. So what's 6 minus 3? That would be x to the 3rd. Then you have y to the 4th divided by y to the 5th. Notice the bigger one's on the bottom. So 5 minus 4 is 1, but I'm going to leave it on the bottom. Then z to the 2nd divided by z to the 9th. 9 minus 2 is 7. z to the seventh on the bottom. Notice, guys, that all of these properties deal with multiplication and addition and subtraction. I know that there are extra things that you got to remember, but guys, that's, I'm sorry, that's plain and simple. That's math. <laughs> there are so many rules to math, and this is why the more complicated jobs that you guys might have out in the future, the more complicated math you could see. We never know. You don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do when you grow up. Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up, right? But uh, guys, you've got to realize that these properties are there to help you take something that's ugly like this and simplify it to this. Again, no, I'm not going to beat you over the head with 9 million examples of these on the test. You will probably have more in your homework like this than you will have on your test. All right, so there's your lesson for today. I tried to keep it under 50 minutes like our class was supposed to be, and we'll do some more with these. We'll practice some more tomorrow, too. And you'll have some homework.